All right, so this is a video lesson introducing you guys to Autodesk's Fusion 360. So this software is free for any students or teachers to use, and it'll allow you to create a lot of different solid models and products that can be later on machined in our Tormach CNC mill that we just got in the shop. So before we get to too far into what it can do, we're just going to start with the basics in this lesson. So if we go to Autodesk's website, Products Fusion 360 Learning Training Tutorials, the first thing they have are three videos that explain sketch philosophy, how they want, how they have created this software in order to make it worthwhile and usable, and why things are the way they are. They're not too long, and they're very worthwhile to read. The next thing after that is there's four short videos that walk you through sketching. In more detail past that we have the hands-on exercise so for now I'm gonna walk you through the hands-on exercise so that you guys don't get stuck when you try using fusion for the first time so if we click on this it's a eight slide deck that'll walk us through step-by-step -step how to create our own tuning fork fusion 360 first step as always open a new document save it give it a name tuning fork practice Make sure that our units are an inch. If you don't do this right away, it's not a big deal. You can switch at any point throughout the process. If you right click here, see how at the bottom it says do not capture design history. You want it to say that. We want to connect, uh, capture the design history so that down here in the bottom, as you create a part, it'll move along the side and show all of the steps you did to create the part. It helps me see what you've done and it figures it allows us to work backwards and try to figure out how to make modifications or changes. So, back to Fusion's website. First thing it asks us to do is to open up a file. So, we've already done that. This is a sketching practice. So, I'm gonna zoom out so you can see a bit more of the picture. What you can tell right away is that they chose a rectangle tool to create this handle. That's what this, the instructions suggest and you can see the origin point is right in the middle so this per this person that created this decided to create a sketch and with the top plane showing in the view cube you can click on the sketch plane to get started and then from the sketch rectangle options we're going to choose a center rectangle and we're going to start from the origin and just to get started we're not going to worry about the size we're just going to snap and draw it out so if you hit d on your keyboard that's for dimension you can click on these lines and then modify their size afterwards so one inch handle is pretty big pretty big we're going to make it one uh half an inch and then the length of it is probably pretty long so d for dimension again drag it out to the side and it's just around six inches so we're going to change that to four inches we'll start there so now we can switch back to our slide deck and the next thing it suggests is that we use a circle command in order to round off the back side of our tuning fork handle so down here at the bottom we want to put a nice arc on this so with circles there's a couple different options you can choose the center diameter and if you drag slowly along eventually the triangle will show up the triangle indicates when you've snapped to the center of a line and then once you get the square line up it will tell you that you've snapped to the outside so what we see there is if we hit d for dimension and click on the circle oh it doesn't like that it doesn't want us to make any changes that's okay we know that this is a half inch diameter which is the exact same as the width of our handle so that's a good start now if we switch back we can see the different constraints that it's showing. So it's showing a mid-plane constraint and that this line is perpendicular to these two guys. So we may not have the exact same ones. We have one perpendicular line. We have the mid-plane mid constraint. If we look down over on our bar, we see midpoint is the triangle and parallel, showing that this line is parallel with the bottom of the part. So we're off to a good start. Now if we move back over to 
the fourth slide, it now suggests that we draw with our line tools these three guys. So we're arbitrarily going to choose how far out we're going to come, up and then over. So zoom back out. I strongly suggest you use a computer with a mouse to make your life a lot easier. And actually seeing how big this is, I'm going to right click on the four inch and I'm going to make it three because that's pretty long. I shorten that up. Now, if we go to our sketch and our line command from this corner, we right away we can look at what we're using. And right now it's telling us that we have a 132 degree angle and we have a 2.8 inch long line. So why don't we make it a two inch long line? And that was a bit of a funny angle, which isn't great. So D for dimension, and we're gonna go click and click. So it tells us what our angle was. And we don't wanna leave it at that random angle. We're just gonna make it 130, so it's a little bit easier to work with. So switch back over. Now we're gonna draw a straight line and then a perpendicular line over. Try to keep this going quick. Sketch line. And we can snap to the previous circle. Say we make this piece three inches. And then if you hit L for line on your keyboard, you won't have to keep going back over. So since our handle is half an inch, we're going to make the top part of the tuning fork the same because it'll just look nice that way. And then from here, we can draw back down until we're perpendicular with this line. So that's where we start using snaps. So we let it snap to this line. And if you come over and hover till it touches the line and bring it back, it shows us that it's the same length, three inches, and we're at 90 degrees. So that's good. And then from there, we don't want to rush over to the other side. What we can do is redraw this line facing the other direction. So we know that if we snap to that corner, we made the line two inches long, which is great. And we have to figure out what angle we were on. Because what we know is that we had 130 degrees before, but it'll be slightly different because we're facing the other way. So we have to do a little bit of math. Or we can just snap and not do any math at all. And keep it restrained at two inch long. And there we go. Now it clicks and stays in line. Right there. Drag it back until we have our two inch. And it stayed in line. Done. Now we know we made this line up three inches long. Alpha line again. We made the top part half inch. And then alpha line. That way you don't have to keep clicking up in the top. And if we bring this back down, we hover over and we bring it back, we've got three inches. So from here, now if you hit escape, the last thing we need to do is add a nice arc in here. So what we can do for that is there's arc options. We can use a three point arc or a center point arc or a tangent arc. Three point arc should allow us to choose whatever we want. There we go. Now, how similar does this look to what's created in the document? Move over to the next slide. And the sketch to the inside can be made up of only lines and an arc. So we know that we use our line functions to draw these three and back down. We used a three point arc to go back up. And then from there, repeated the same dimensions on the other side, brought it back over. And what it suggests here at the end is, does the rectangle handle in the sketch have a construction line in the center of the origin? If we flip back to fusion, we can see that our construction line is right in the center. So that's good. I'm going to wrap this video up here. And you guys in class can take turns since we've only got three computers with fusion on them and have a go at making your tuning fork.